There's a Buddhist saying, pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. And I guess we all know what that means. There is pain in life. There's no way to avoid that. There's grief, there's sorrow, there's illness, there's sadness. It goes on. There's no way that you're going to get out of this life alive, let's face it. <laughs> so it's not about what happens in your life. It's about how you respond to that. It's what you do with the things that happen in your life that make who you are and that make your happiness or not, or your, or your suffering. Can I get a show of hands of um, who here has ever felt anxious? <laughs> okay, there's only one reason for that. You're human. <laughs> Anxiety is a human condition. We've evolved to have this. We've evolved out of the jungle to, to have what is called a negativity bias. So we focus on the bad things because that's what allows us to survive. When, um, you know, if, if, you were, if one of your ancestors or one of your potential ancestors happened to be um, looking for a cave to spend the night tens of thousands of years ago and they walked into a cave and there was um, a bear in the back hibernating and they didn't run to the next cave, but instead they said, oh, what a nice, soft little bear. Chances were they didn't pass on their genes. <laughs> so the genes that were passed on were the ones that made us feel anxious and negative. But sometimes this anxiety can overwhelm and sometimes we feel like we become crippled from this and we don't know where to go with that. And that's when it's helpful to have a personal trainer for your mind. Because let's face it, many of you may have had a personal trainer for your physical fitness. So it makes sense to have a personal trainer for your mental fitness. Because research tells us that the brain can actually does change structure depending on what we think. Thoughts are neurons, brain cells firing together. And if we do the same thing over and over again, it lays down a pathway, a network. And that is what stays with us. It becomes a habit. So if you're practicing, and whatever you practice is what you get really good at. So if you're practicing anxiety, that's what you're going to get really good at. You'll be fantastic at being anxious. So if you practice at thinking in a positive way, in feeling your happiness, in savouring the good things that happen every day, because let's face it, good things happen as well as bad things, then that's what you become really good at. So I'd like to share with you um, a personal experience or a couple of personal experiences that have happened to me in my life. If we go back to the very, very, very long time ago when I was 22 years old, um, I was a passenger on a, on a friend's motorbike and uh, we had a bad accident. She scratched her watch. I ended up four months in hospital with a completely shattered femur. Now, when I say shattered, I mean there were so many pieces. They actually, it was Humpty Dumpty. They couldn't put me back together again. And so they stuck me in what's called skeletal traction, where you're actually physically tied to the bed month after month after month until the bone heals, which it didn't. And it led me into a five-year nightmare of will I ever walk again? Will I walk without an aid? What is going to happen to the rest of my life? The good news was that a few months before this event happened, I had learned to meditate. And meditation is like drops of water. You don't actually know that anything is happening initially, but drops of water is how mountains become canyons. Drops of water are powerful if they're repeated over time. And this meditation practice that I had been repeating day after day, week after week, month after month, started to change my brain so that I was able to move from a negative mindset into a positive one. When we're negative, we have blinkers on. You see the problem. This is the problem. That's all there is. When you have a positive mindset, the blinkers go back and you see all the possible solutions. And that's exciting. Fast forward 30 plus years from that accident and I was crossing the road on a pedestrian crossing. Um, eyeballed the driver as she was coming towards me. She looked straight back at me and kept on going and ran me over. That was the other leg. So right there and then I decided, um, next life, I'm coming back as a snake, no <laughs> legs. So I was lying there in the road, 
seeing this car coming towards me and seeing that it hadn't stopped and that my head was just in line with the front right tyre and wondering, will I die? Will it hurt when she crushes my head with that tyre? And then she stopped. And at that point, I went out of panic and into the state that my mind had become as habit, which was just, just look for the solutions. And I instinctively went into what we call in meditation, a body scan. I went through the body and to find out where the problem was, neck, head, back, all of that's good. Leg, oh, okay, leg won't move. When the ambulance came a few minutes later and they put me in, um, a, a witness later said to me that I had been smiling as they took me away in the ambulance. Now, I don't remember any of that. I don't remember smiling, but it was about having that positive emotion because I was looking for the positive because my brain had been trained for happiness. I would love to help you to be your personal trainer for your mind and to help you to show you how you can train your brain for happiness. Yeah. Yeah.